Hello boys and welcome to the fifth lesson on glaciation and today's lesson is on glacial deposition. Look at that glacier, that wonderful image of a glacier, a river of ice and we're going to be thinking about some of the material that glaciers pick up and then deposit when they melt at the snout of the glacier. Should be a very short lesson today, no more than 30 minutes. A um, couple of quizzes and then some textbook work. So here is the first quiz. Do you think you could match up uh, those words with the definitions? Oh, so tempting to move forward on this YouTube clip, but why don't you pause it for a second and see how you can match them up, how well you do. Here they are, the answers. How did you get on? All these words were from uh, last lesson, so hopefully you did well. Well, on to today's lesson. So we're going to be looking at glacial deposition. There's a glacier on the right there, but it doesn't look like ice. It's been covered in so much rock material, and there are um, three ways that glaciers transport material that they erode from high up in the mountains. The first way is what we call supraglacial, a material that falls directly onto the surface of a glacier. Can you see that layer of rock on lying on top of the glacier? That's supraglacial material and that will be carried down as the glacier flows downhill. The second type is N glacial load, material found within the glacier. Maybe it falls down crevices or cracks in the ice and then it's carried downhill within the body of the glacier. And the third type is the material that's carried beneath at the bottom of the glacier, subglacial load. And that material will be ground into small fine powder underneath that ice, but eventually it will be deposited at the end of the glacier. Well, glaciers will then dump this material when they melt and they'll create piles of material that we call or made from boulder clay. But um, these small scale mounds or piles of material often form ridges and they're called moraines. Well, here's a picture of a glacier moving down the mountainside, and as it does so, it's carrying material, that brown material. And there are different types of moraine that's created and dropped by a glacier. Today's textbook will talk to you about these different types of glacial deposition and the features that are created. And the textbook will include information about ground moraine, lateral moraine, medial moraine, terminal moraine, and these great things called drumlins, which are ridges of material dropped. You can just about pick them out in the photo there. The ice is all melted, but there are ridges and they're called drumlins. And the ice, when it disappears, leaves behind these different types of moraine. And if you're very clever, you can look at the landscape today and see the material that's been deposited in different ways. And the textbook will tell you much more about this. So what I would like you to do for today's lesson is to answer all the questions in the textbook. There should be two attachments to this presentation. And there are six questions in the textbook I would like you to answer. I'm going to give you time now to do that. And at the end, we can have a brief chat about some of the answers. So pause the film now and have a go at those textbook questions.
Well, how did you get on with those questions? Hopefully well, and to test yourself, here's another quick quiz to finish with. Can you match up uh, the word with the definition? And it might be a good idea to put these in your exercise book so you can remember them. Tempting, I know, to go on to the next slide where the answers are found, but pause this for a sec, see how you get on. And here are the answers. How did you get on? I hope you did well with those activities. And I hope now you know a little bit more about glacial deposition. Look forward to uh, lesson six. Uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.